Hello everyone, my name is Edo. I'm a PhD student in Robotic Systems Lab here at ETH Zurich. Today I will present our latest findings on motion planning for legged wheeled robots. We showcase most of our results on a walking excavator, however our findings hold for other legged wheeled machines as well. A walking excavator is shown here in the title slide and has four legs with wheels and an arm. Thus it can drive when the terrain allows and also step to overcome more challenging obstacles. So what is the state of the art for planning and control of these machines? It's essentially what humans can do. And looking at these videos, we can see that they're pretty good. They can negotiate uh, tight spaces, step over obstacles, and really utilize the full kinematic potential of the machine uh, to go and navigate in challenging terrain. So why would we want to motivate, why would we want to automate a walking excavator? Simply because planning and control for these machines is complicated. Here on the right hand side, you can see a simplified geometry of a Menzimov M5 for 5 walking excavator. Each orange cylinder is one joint, one degree of freedom that a human operator has to control. In this case, we have six degrees of freedom for the floating base, and 25 joints which amounts to 31 degrees of freedom in total. Controlling all of these is nearly impossible at once and controlling only a subset is exhausting even for experienced human operators. Furthermore, training new operators is hard and therefore there's very few people who can actually utilize all of these degrees of freedom. So what planning approaches uh, are out there and what could we use for like wheel machines. A tremendous progress has been made recently and we have seen many legged wheel robots exploiting their kinematic and dynamic properties to perform complex motions. One example includes animal on wheels using a differential dynamic programming solver in a receding horizon fashion. Another example shows the handle robot here on the left from Boston Dynamics performing a challenging whole body manipulation task that requires precise timing and coordination of multiple degrees of freedom. Most of the work for dynamic leg wheel locomotion uh, has been backed by trajectory optimization. Such planners typically do not take into account the terrain information and inevitably fall prey to local minima. However, they can handle complex robot kinematics and dynamics quite gracefully. On the other hand, roboticists have also relied, uh, they have also relied on sampling based planners to plan motions in highly non-convex and cluttered environments. This class of planners can produce global plans and escape local minima introduced by obstacles. Some recent works such as the Mars rover here on the left can also optimize the contact schedule and drive in an easy terrain and switch to stepping once the terrain becomes more challenging. Sampling based planner has also been used to plan acyclic motions for point boot robots, such as animal robot here on the right. Although uh, these planners can escape local minima, uh, they do not handle complex dynamics or kinematics as well, and they scale fairly bad uh, with the increasing degrees of freedom. You could also argue that they do not fully utilize robots capabilities because most of these motions are simply statically stable. So can we have the best of both worlds? In this work, we propose to divide the problem into two stages. First, we plan an approximate motion using a sampling based planner. Sampling based planner produces a whole body plan that is not fully consistent with robots kinematics and dynamics. For example, non-holonomic rolling constraints might not be satisfied at this point. Secondly, we then refine uh, the initial plan using trajectory optimization. The idea is that the initial plan will put the optimization close to the correct local minimum, which satisfies all the robot model constraints as well as the terrain constraints. An example of planned motions uh, using the proposed method is shown in this slide. On the left, we show the unrefined motion produced by the sampling based planner, whereas on the right, 
the final refined plan is shown. The excavator was asked to step over a gap. We command a goal position and provide a map of the environment. The sampling base planner computes the whole body configurations together with the contact schedule. This approximate plan is not fully consistent yet. This can be seen in the wheels motion that slides sideways sometimes and also in the shovel motion that penetrates the terrain. Refined plan, however, gets rid of these violations and contains smooth and consistent motion. The trajectory optimization planner merely optimizes the motion while keeping the contact schedule fixed. Our sampling based planner is split into online and offline part. First, we compute a roadmap for each limb. This roadmap can then be used at runtime to evaluate feasible and collision free footholds. We also store the center of mass information uh, which for each limb, which allows us to quickly evaluate the static stability criterion at runtime. In the left image, you can see the roadmap for the legs of the excavator. Each red vertex represents one configuration and each blue edge is a connection between neighboring configurations. In the right image, an example for the arm roadmap is shown. At runtime, we can simply invalidate vertices that are in collision with the ground and use the remaining portions of roadmap for planning of the limb movement. At runtime, we also use an RRT-based planner. Our planner sees the environment around it through an elevation map, which is shown on the left with different colors corresponding to different heights. We also compute a traversability map shown in the middle. White areas are not fully traversable, whereas white areas are fully traversable, whereas black areas are not. Black areas correspond to steps, essentially. For the optimization, we use a sign distance field of the traversability map shown on the right in order to keep contact points outside of untraversable areas. Our RRT planner samples in SE2 space, thus reducing the dimensionality of the problem. We can then deduce the full SE3 pose by looking at the local terrain properties. The idea behind is that height, roll and pitch have to roughly follow the terrain shape. Otherwise, the robot would be in collision with the terrain, and thus our sampled pose would render invalid. We then compute whole body configurations using the pre-computed roadmap. We tested our planner on different terrain features, such as steps and gaps. An example of a robot going over a step can be seen in the bottom left video. We also tested generalization to combinations of different terrain features, which is shown in the other three videos. We can see that the planner utilizes all degrees of freedom to negotiate challenging terrain. The contact schedule emerges from our sampling based planner and we do not change it during the optimization. The counterweight balancing behavior with the arm, as well as precise use of legs for stepping, are discovered by the optimization based planner. In all of these experiments, we only command the goal pose for the chassis of the robot. We try to quantify the effect of a good initialization on the optimization convergence. We use a simple linear interpolation strategy as a baseline. This strategy interpolates between start and goal configurations to initialize the optimization. Such a heuristic is commonly found in literature. We compare this naive initialization against our sampling based planner initialization. The time until convergence for the sampling based initialization is shown in blue versus red for the linear interpolation initialization strategy. We can see that in continuous terrains, such as flat terrain, which is not shown here for the sake of brevity, and rough terrain, which is shown here uh, on the left, we can see that good initializations uh, do not make a big difference. However, in this continuous terrain, such as gap or steps or hold, um, we can see that a good initialization 
makes difference between converging and finding a solution or failing to find a feasible plan. Contact schedule can be shaped in our planner by tuning the cost inside uh, an underlying RRT planner, for example, RRT star. Here on the left hand side, uh, we show the contact schedule with low cost on changing contact states. The results, this results in excavators stepping over the gap since it is the shortest distance to the goal point. It merely ignores the bridge on the right. Increasing the contact breaking cost causes the planner to take the longer route that requires only two contact changes as opposed to six. Thus, we get this preferred driving behavior as opposed to stepping. This is shown here in the right image. Below the snapshot of motion is the contact schedule with blue color corresponding to limb, limb being in contact um, with the terrain. We implemented this methodology uh, for the animal robot and perform hardware experiments. All of the motions in these videos have been generated by running the sampling base planner once and then tracking the motion with the differential dynamic programming based MPC controller. The MPC does not change the contact schedule. We can see that our planner generates motions that are actually feasible and can be tracked on the real hardware. Furthermore, this showcases the generality of our approach, which is not only limited to walking excavators, but generalizes to other leg lead robots as well. In summary, we have proposed a combined sampling and optimization based motion planner, where we hope that the combination of two approaches allows us to escape local minima and handle many degrees of freedom uh, for complex robots. We compute initializations using sampling and then refine them using trajectory optimization. Our evaluations suggest that the optimization can handle very complex robot models, however it struggles with contact schedule optimization and dealing with uh, environment constraints. In the future, we plan to conduct real-world experiments with the excavator and we are also experimenting uh, with point foot robots. This is the end of the presentation. Uh, I would like to thank you for listening and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us using our contact info. Thank you.